Sup you beautiful people. Hope you've had a fantastic day. Welcome back to another new episode of What If Naruto Has a Demonic Heritage. If you guys enjoyed this what if, comment down below and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel after watching this video. Don't forget to shower some appreciation onto the incredible author responsible for this fanfiction. The link is conveniently waiting for you in the description down below. Before we get into it though, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. Have to run. Have to hide. They can't find me. I won't go back, not again. The small form raced through the dense forestry. He heard the small sounds of rustling in the distance. He could smell the faint scents of his the followers. The shifting winds he felt told him they were getting closer. He had to hide before they caught up to him. There. He spotted a large thorn bush at the far side of a clearing. It would provide perfect cover for him. His followers' scents were closer now. He had to make it. He used every bit of energy he had to dart across the open area. With a powerful spring, he dove to make it before his pursuers caught up to him. I'm gonna make it, he thought with glee. Irk that is before a strong grip grabbed him out of the air by the scruff of his neck. No, let me go. I won't go back. Never. The small cat struggled defiantly, but it couldn't get out of the grip. Scratching, flailing, and hissing with all his might but he just couldn't break free. Come on. I'll even make it clean and quick, which is more than this damn thing deserves. We'll tell her it got killed by wild dogs, or something. She'll get over it. Hell I'm pretty damn sure she can just get a new one. No, not him. Anyone but him. The cat turned slightly to see the person holding him. No. If the cat could have cried, it would have broke down right then and there. Holding him was none other than the silver-haired one. All hope of escape vanished. He stopped his struggling when the boy's icy blue eyes locked onto him. The boy's bandaged hand tightened painfully on his scruff of skin. He could feel tendrils of invisible energy slowly wrap around his neck. His death was imminent. No Naruto, an exasperated voice spoke from his earpiece. Target is to be brought back safely and intact. Is identity confirmed? The cat slouched in relief as the dark-haired one checked him. Yeah, identity is confirmed. Tiger, cat of the Fire Lord's wife. The cat relaxed even further as the gentle pink-haired one came to take him from the evil silver-haired one's grasp. If a cat could look smug, this one sure would be doing a good job. Before the pink one could reach him, he was slammed into a nearby tree hard enough for wind to leave his lungs and his ribs to ache, followed by a fist cracking the wood next to his head. Naruto stared at him hatefully. His blue eyes revealed his annoyance and anger. The cat could even see faint traces of red bleeding into his eyes. Tiger could feel the dark energy of Naruto's arm tighten around his neck. The malice was so strong, was he going to die here? He went limp and was then tossed to the gentle pink-haired one. Take the damn thing. If I carry it, it'll be dead before we make it ten feet. Naruto said struggling to control his anger. He was barely able to keep himself from turning the cat's mind into mush with concentrated killing intent. He could feel his devil bringer tremble as if wanting to crush the cat itself. Are you okay Naruto? Tiger got you pretty good with his claws. Sakura said looking at his right arm, catching a faint hint of blue under the coat. I'm fine. Let's go. The faster we get done the faster we can get our C-ranked mission. None of the genin voiced it but they were all excited for the higher ranked mission. Protecting someone from bandits, thieves, maybe even a few lesser demons. They were all eager to test what they learned. Naruto may not have been able to kill the cat, but watching it mercilessly smothered with deadly affection was an added bonus. Though he would still like to kill it, or even maim it horribly, either would do just fine. As the lady went to pay for the efforts of their hard work the Hokage addressed them. Now other open deranked missions we have include, babysitting, delivering groceries, gardening. A lady's scream was heard along with the papers being scattered and scrambling of feet. And catching the fire lady's cat, again. Fuck no! I did not just waste an hour catching it for the damn thing to run away in less than five fucking minutes. Naruto was already stomping out the door. Remember Naruto, intact. Kakashi called out behind him. The jonin was answered by the distant scream of, Here kitty kitty, come out and play. It was followed by a cat's screech, trees falling, a distant thunk sound of a sword being stuck in a tree, and then total silence. He wouldn't hurt my dear tiger, would he? The fire lady asked. Actually, I'd be surprised if the cat came back alive or in one piece for that matter. Kakashi said with his nose in his book. 
the fire lady's eyes started to tear up. Wait, did I say in that? She looked up hopefully. You might not even get anything to bury when Naruto's done. Kakashi stopped when he saw Naruto carrying the cat or what used to be a cat. The fur that was a lush orange was now stark white, as if seeing severe trauma. Its eyes were wide and glossy, and the only movement it showed was a shudder every once in a while. Naruto walked up to the fire lady and dropped the dead-looking animal into her arms. Don't worry, me and him just had a nice little heart-to-heart -heart chat. And I don't think he'll be running away anytime soon, if ever. Isn't that right, kitty? The cat just shuddered in his owner's arms, before going in completely limp. The cat wasn't dead but it wasn't totally alive either. Naruto walked back to his team with a smile on his face. Kakashi noticed two ruffled bandages, as if they were rewrapped in a hurry. Hmm, I think I feel kind of sorry for the cat, on second thought, I guess it had it coming. Hokage-sama, Kakashi said to the aged leader. I had reserved a C-ranked mission for my team. The Hokage thought for a second. Ah yes. Turning to the door he said. You can come in now. The genin were filled with excitement. Who would they be guarding a negotiator, a lord, a princess? In walked in a gritty old man with a bottle of newly bought sake in his hand, already half empty. What? I paid good money for three kids and a random guy with one eye. And is silver the new look or are you just trying to copy your teacher, shrimp? Naruto slowly drew Yamato. What was that, old man, a death wish? Well, I've been kind of busy but I think I can help you out. Before the boy could advance Kakashi grabbed him. The boy grumbled while sheathing Yamato and muttered under his breath. As if I'm a pervert like him, that's insulting. Kakashi ignored the slight jab to his ego. No Naruto, it would be bad for business if you killed a client. Of course, if he finds it alright to insult my students, maybe I should let him see how dangerous you three are? Kakashi said I'm the old man. The old man spoke strong, but the ninja could tell he was nervous. I'm the great bridge builder, Tizuna. I paid good money for you to guide me safely to my home and I expect you to protect me with your lives. We leave in the morning. The students were handed their papers detailing the mission, and left to pack and rest for their trip to the land of waves. Naruto turned his shower off and stepped out. Grabbing a towel and wrapping it around his waist he walked up to the mirror. After wiping the mist from it he just looked at himself. He was slim, but years of working himself into the ground had packed defined muscle on his body. He had deep blue eyes with whisker-like birthmarks and the intricate seal on his stomach signified him as the container of the QB. He was kind of glad the old man told him about it after her death. His silver hair was still wet and nearly fell to his shoulders. It never did ever spike like it did when it was blonde so he always wore it down. And finally his right devil bringer arm, he dubbed it, dark reddish armor with glowing light blue skin beneath. It was his entire right arm, beginning at the hand and ending at the shoulder. Bum BUM, his body pulsed with energy. He grasped the counter as pain shot through his body. Arg, he grabbed his devil bringer as it started to spasm uncontrollably. His heartbeat raced as the devil bringer's armor started to climb further onto his body. It slowly crawled up his neck and onto his chest leaving the skin under the red armor with a slight blue glow that, while noticeable, wasn't as strong a glow as his devil bringer itself. Bumbium, the pulse was stronger the second time. What's happening? His voice became deeper and seemed to echo as if spoken by two up at the mirror he saw his right eye was glowing a deep blood red and his canines and whisker marks looked more pronounced. Then his body started to give off a deep blue aura. The aura slowly started to get stronger as it swirled around him trying to take on a faint form. But before it could manifest everything stopped. He fell to the ground suddenly exhausted. He could feel and see the devil bringer receding along with the blue aura. Mustering the energy to push himself off the floor. He looked into the mirror again. He looked the same as when he came out the shower. What the hell was that? He stumbled out of the bathroom and was barely able to slip on boxers before he passed out in his bed. A man silently observed everything that happened in the apartment from a tree outside. He had on a black shirt, pants, gloves and boots with a large red trench coat over them. He had messy silver hair and on his back was a broadsword with a screaming skull design on the guard. Neither me nor Virgil developed at such a rate. I'm going to have to watch this one closely. He then disappeared in a blur of red. He stood ankle deep in water. He was standing in a river that ran off into darkness. So, where the hell am I now? He asked Trish who was already there. She laughed at his question. Did I say something funny? He asked annoyed. He didn't like being laughed at. No, master, just ironic. This is the portal to hell. 
she whispered in his ear, wrapping her arms around his neck. He could feel certain female attributes press into his back. She just was there. No teleportation. No high-speed movement. Just there. How did you do that? He asked stiffly. I am your guardian master. As guardian I explain your powers whether normally or though the dreams. Trish seemed comfortable where she was since she didn't show any signs of moving. Naruto was used to her, just not this close. So you control the dreams? No, master, the dreams are their own. I can guide them, but my influence is limited. Now watch. This one is important considering your devil form is starting to manifest. She still didn't move but she didn't give off any ill intent so he just left her where she was. How did she know what happened? But more importantly, I'm becoming a devil? He watched as the two brothers appeared and started to fight. This was unlike all the other battles where he had only caught the end. They started slow testing each other's defenses but soon they were going all out. This battle surpassed the others by far, their speed and power were immense. Not one move was wasted. They were at a stalemate the entire time. As they increased the pace of battle Naruto found it more and more difficult to follow their movements. After he thought he had seen everything they had to offer, he was left dumbfounded. As if reaching a silent decision, they both exploded with power taking on different more demonic forms. Their forms were opposites even taking on their color of choice. The red one had sharp horns pointing downward with two wings on his back. The blue demon had dull horns pointing upwards in a V shape with four wings on his back and a sheath on his right arm. Naruto could barely keep up with their movements now, they were everywhere. They moved at such speed that they left after images in their wake. The only time he saw them clearly is when the clashed in explosions of red and blue energy. The red one wielded a broadsword. The blue one wielded a katana Yamato. The blue one was using his sword. The man ten years ago, it was him. As soon as he realized that the two demonic forms disappeared. It seems you've realized what the dreams were trying to show you, they are no longer needed. Trish said finally letting him go. Wait, that's all the dreams are going to show me? He said turning to face her. The dreams will come back, but for now they have fulfilled their purpose, alright. So I'm going to turn into something like they were? That idea scared Naruto, he could handle being a demon even a devil but would he lose himself? Would he still be the same? You may, or you may not. The form, or devil trigger, is different for everyone of demonic decent. You look troubled master, why? Trish was puzzled. To bring out one's devil trigger form at such a young age was a sign of great power. I'm just wondering what I will become. Will I stay like that or will I be able to control it like those guys? By the way who are those guys? I keep seeing them but you never told me who they were. He needed more answers. You still have not fully developed. Your body is adapting to handle the change to you devil form. As for the two sons of Sparta. The red one is Dante and the blue one is Virgil. Trish then started to become transparent. Time's up my master, but I am almost to your current location. I will be with you very soon. With that she faded from view as Naruto drifted into a dreamless sleep. Trish was about to resume her run, but sensed a familiar energy. Nice to see you again Dante. The man known as Dante appeared in a blur of red, landing softly on the ground. You look well Trish. Still protecting decedents, I see. Someone must keep the line of your line alive. Which is more than I can say about you. A son of Sparta whose powers have surpassed Sparta's own and closed himself off from the world. Trish, this isn't my world anymore. He said looking up to the moon. Watch the kid carefully. The demons and devils are gathering, appearing more often. I can feel something big coming and we all have our roles, even me. He answered still staring into the moon. What do you know Dante? Trish knew Dante. And he was never like this unless something bad was going to happen. You just do your part and train the kid, and I'll do mine. He phased out in a blur of red energy. Trish took off at top speed. Just what is going on? Why are the demons gathering? And how does it involve the new master? Naruto woke up feeling great, still mostly asleep, but great anyway. The sun was just rising outside. The cold morning air drifted over him and in response he snuggled closer to the warmth behind him, his head going in between two pillows. Wait, since when do I have two pillows? He wondered becoming more awake by the second. He had just moved into something warm and moving. He felt hot breath in his ear that sent a shiver down his spine. He also felt two arms tighten around him, not knowing how he missed them in the first place. Good morning, master. He bolted out of his bed, grabbing Yamato nearby and turned to see 
Trish. The woman was lounging in his bed with one of his bigger shirts on, barely covering anything. She stretched and Naruto couldn't help but stare at rather interesting movements of her female anatomy. But how? Naruto couldn't get out much more than that. His brain was still trying to process all that was happening. Why master, didn't I tell you, I had found you. She slid out of the bed and walked over to Naruto. She circled him, studying everything about him. He blushed under her stare finally realizing he was still in his boxers. I must say, your power is so unusual. It will stably grow one instant while at other times it will jump dramatically. Naruto's brain had finally started working again. Shit, I got a mission. How am I going to explain you? He started pacing around the room. Don't worry master. We'll be fine. Where is he? He knows the mission is today. Even Kakashi Sensei is on time. Sakura ranted. Team 7, besides Naruto, and Tazuna were right outside the village gate. Kakashi had his nose buried in his favorite orange book. Sasuke leaned against a tree obviously angry the mission was being held up. Where is that silver-haired munchkin? We're wasting time. Tizuna wasn't the most patient of people either. Closing his book with a loud snap, Kakashi looked into the village. He's coming, and it seems he's brought a friend along. Everyone looked in the direction Kakashi was facing to see Naruto, and the person behind him closing the distance between them. They each one had the same thing in mind who is she? And why is she with Naruto? Kakashi was the most curious though. From Naruto's file he had no family left, and he isn't the kind of person to go out and make friends. The only ones he still willingly associated with were the people who ran the Ichiraku Ramen Bar, the Hokage's grandson, and the Hokage himself. Could this be an enemy ninja? Naruto is a very powerful individual. His current growth was nothing short of spectacular. Maybe another village realized this and wants him for their self. He also knew about Naruto's secret. Lab led as a bloodline limit since there was no other way to explain it. When they finally stopped in front of Kakashi, Naruto introduced them. Team 7 this is Trish and Trish this is Team 7 and our charge. He said while motioning to them. Ah uh, look Kakashi sensei this may seem a little strange, but he was cut off by Kakashi, who went from carefree to all business. Team 7 triangle formation around Tazuna and begin walking. When Naruto moved to protest, his voice came out more forceful. Now, the three genin silently moved into formation and began down the road. Kakashi then turned to the mysterious newcomer. He inspected her quickly. Her chong sam revealed that while she may not be a ninja she was surely a fighter. The defined muscles and way the dress was made for easier movement gave it away. He decided to cut to the chase. Are you a threat to my students? If you are I will kill you myself. If she was intimidated by him she sure didn't show it. She didn't even bat an eyelash as he spiked his killing intent at her. When she spoke she was calm and collected. I'm merely here for the young master, or Naruto. I am no danger nor will I hold you back. They stared at each other for a moment, then a silent agreement was made as they both walked to follow Team 7. I knew having a team would be a pain but no, I had to pass them because of their alarming potential. Kakashi let out a deep sigh and took out his precious orange book. Should we attack? One man said to another from his hiding place. No, we'll ambush them later. Don't you see the demons up ahead? Better to not get involved in the crossfire and attack while they're weak. The two men ran off making as little noise as possible. They didn't see Trisha's slight frown and Kakashi looking up from his book at their hiding place as they left. The sound of mindless laughter rang out from around them. Everyone was instantly alert. The Jen encircled Tizuna with Kakashi at point a few feet in front of them and Trish behind them. Scarecrows. They are weak alone but strong in units. I think you guys can handle them. Kakashi said not looking up from his book. Attack with no mercy, they sure won't give you any. Hideous jester like monsters stumbled onto the road. They had huge side blades in the place of an arm or leg. They hesitated for a moment when they saw Naruto but attacked anyway. The genin, hardened from their intense training, tore though the weak lesser demons like paper. Sakura threw weapons to take out most of them from a distance, and any one of them unlucky enough to get close to her were slammed by a fist that could put a sledgehammer to shame. Sasuke weaved in and out of attacks with two kunai stabbing and slashing. The scarecrows that missed the Uchiha found their weapons embedded in one of their own. Naruto just carved a bloody path of destruction with Yamato. The demonic blade danced around him, cutting though enemies effortlessly. Naruto could feel adrenaline rushing though him and his heartbeat in his ears. His movements slowly became more and more brutal. 
He wanted them to suffer. Red slowly started to seep into his eyes making them the color of blood. These lowly demons thought they could stand up to him. He would crush every last one of them. Sword strokes that could cut though the demons with little effort started to smash them into them with brute force. Elegant slashes that killed in one stroke became brutal butchering that tore up the enemy, letting them suffer. Naruto walked up slowly to the last scarecrow, all the others being wiped out. He raised Yamato high into the air and brought in crashing down on it again and again before stabbing the monster into the ground and ripping it out sending the monster flying a few feet away. The scarecrow writhed in pain. Only then did Naruto come to his senses as he watched the monster bleed to death on the ground from numerous jagged gashes. He could still feel the power calling for more blood and the happiness from causing the creature pain. It made him sick. Yes he hated them, but that didn't mean he wanted to become a mindless killer like them. He turned to see the others. Kakashi hadn't moved his nose from that book but Naruto had no doubt that he had saw the whole thing. Sakura looked at him as if awed by his brutality. Sasuke saw a challenge, the Uchiha had finally realized the so-called dead last wasn't as weak as others made him out to be. And Trish, Trish just studied him. She was doing that much too often for his taste. Well, you guys coming or not? Naruto didn't care if they feared him or not, but he did want to do this mission. About a mile up ahead the group passed by a small puddle on the side of the road. This would not have been suspicious if it had not rained in several days. The only one who missed it was Tazuna. Kakashi's training had the genin aware of their surroundings at all times. Two men with horned headbands and water masks rose out of the water and went after the biggest threat first. The jonin of Konoha was torn to shreds by their spike chain. None of the genin seemed to care, they knew that attack couldn't take the Kakashi down. Sakura moved to guard Tazuna and Naruto, and Sasuke engaged the enemies who tried to charge them. The two enemies didn't know what hit them. One minute their chain is linked and ready to take out the other silver-haired one the next the chain is cut by a flash of blue. Sasuke attacked one wearing a gauntlet on his right hand with a spinning kick successfully separating him from his partner. With his element of surprise gone Sasuke was hard pressed to dodge his opponent's swipes at him. He could see the green poison drip from the metal fingers. Think I've got to do something before he corners me. It's risky but it could work. Naruto is starting to rub off on me. Sasuke slowly lessened the speed of his dodging. Soon the gauntlet was missing by inches. As he was backed into a tree. The enemy sensing his victory plunged his claw in for the kill. Only to get it stuck in the tree behind the genin. Sasuke had jumped over the attack at the last minute. As he came down both his hands landed on the smooth armored metal. Tightening his grip he put all his strength into a devastating mule kick. The kick smashed into the man's face sending him into unconsciousness. It was amazing his neck hadn't snapped from the force. Naruto's battle was one-sided. The boy danced around gauntlet on the man's left hand with little to no effort at all. The attacks was obvious. This opponent was unworthy. The older man couldn't even keep up with him, and he wasn't even using his sword. Then he felt it. Bum bm. Naruto's blood began to boil. His heartbeat was racing. It called out for him to crush his enemy without mercy. A dull blue aura gathered around him as the bandages on his arm began to unravel and his right eye was slowly clouded over by a blood-red glow. He clutched his head and boy froze. His head was down and a strange blue chakra was gathering around him as he seemed to struggle against something. The older man seeing the boy stop took the opening and dismissed the blue chakra as a trick of the light. When he struck his eyes widened as his gauntlet was stopped effortlessly by the boy's right arm. He followed with a sucker punch to get out but that was stopped as well. They grappled for a moment before the boy raised his head. Every muscle in the man's body seized up in fear when he saw those blood-red eyes. When the boy spoke it was deeper, an echo eerily around him. You are nothing compared to me, Naruto said in a voice dripping with disdain. Naruto had but the chunin, hard. The man backed away seeing stars. When they cleared he could see he was outnumbered with his brother down. He decided a tactical retreat was in order. He threw multiple shuriken at Tazuna and when Sakura and Sasuke moved to protect him they fled. Naruto just stood there struggling to stay in control of his blood calmly stood before the boy, ignoring the demonic power that he was leaking. She walked up to him and wrapped her arms around his neck while kneeling to look into his glowing red eyes. Master, control your power. She felt the power recede as Naruto pulled himself together. You are one surprise after another, young one. Trish thought with amusement. She almost let him go but decided to just reposition herself to where she stood behind him with her arms still wrapped around his neck. 
Naruto was too tired to care as her hand played in his silver locks. Kakashi was the only one who had witnessed this strange scene. Sasuke had been preoccupied with his battle. Sakura had been watching Sasuke's fight. He had yet to crush all the fangirl out of her. So Naruto's battle was completely missed by her. And Tazuna was too nervous and deep in thought to care about anything around him. Kakashi revealed himself, surprising only Tazuna. Status report. Kakashi said as he turned to his team. No damage sustained sensei. They each answered in union. Good. Now based on combat observation what have you learned? He looked to Sasuke on the far left. Enemy ninja were at least Chunin level judging by skill and had planned attack from the start. Watching us and waiting for perfect chance to strike. Enough. Sakura, how were they discovered? The girl stood a little straighter at being addressed. Enemy Chunin were discovered due to their own poor observation skills. They hid under the genjutsu of a puddle even though it has not rained in several weeks. Sakura finished. And lastly, who was their target Naruto? The boy was still being held by Trish and seemed tired. Whatever happened must have put him though quite a bit of strain. But he ignored his sudden energy loss and answered anyway. Kakashi had to ignore the vague resemblance of the genin's position and a similar scene in his book. He put all his might into not taking out his book to see how that scene ended. That wouldn't fit the seriousness of the situation. The target was obviously our charge, Tazuna. All of them stared at Tazuna, who was now sweating heavily. The old man went to try and explain his position but before he got the chance he was beat by Kakashi addressing his team. Since you handled the attack so well, I'll let you guys choose. Will we continue our mission or abandon it? All those who wish to abandon the mission, speak up now. After a while when no objections were here Kakashi continued. As expected. Move out. As Team 7 along with Trish behind Naruto walked away, Tazuna just stood there stunned. Only when Kakashi asked if he was coming did the man rush to catch up. Why did you choose to help me? The old man couldn't help but ask. Naruto answered for all of them, in his own way. Well, quitting would only make us bitches. Besides we could use a challenge, it sounds like fun. Sasuke's smirk and Sakura's shy smile proved they had similar reasons not to object. Kakashi's head was in his orange book trying to find out how the scene he was reminded of ended. He could always grill Naruto and his new girlfriend on what happened later. Trish didn't answer, it was her duty to protect the descendant of Sparta. In a hideout located in Wave we see a short greedy looking man in an expensive suit yelling at another man on a couch. The man on the couch was getting very annoyed with his clients complaining. Do you hear me Zabuza? Your men failed. I should kill them myself since the others didn't. I did not pay that money for failure. You the man was cut off when a huge sword nearly took his head off. Normally it wouldn't be that impressive but with the man, Zabuza, still sitting in his seat nearly a dozen feet away holding the sword, that was close enough for the short man to touch, in one hand. Stop your whining Gato. I'll just have to take care of the mission myself. Haku, Gozu, Meizu. Come. Zabuza calmly walked out strapping the sword to his back as his masked apprentice and the demon brothers followed a few feet behind. Gato stood on shaky legs, barely keeping his bladder in check. That bastard. He seethed, he was not one to insult so casually. The price he had to paying them was robbery. Is it uncovered yet? Gato asked one of his henchmen for getting his anger. Almost sir, the surrounding area is still being cleared. It will be fully uncovered shortly, a week at most. The man answered straightening his tie. Good, you can go now. When the man walked out Gato let out his cry of excitement. When I'm done with you Zabuza, you're going to beg for my forgiveness and I'm going to enjoy killing you. The greedy man's insane laughter could be heard throughout the compound. So you see, that's why I had to lie. We didn't have enough money to pay you but we need the protection. We're struggling, I have to finish that bridge. It's Wave's only hope to stop Gato. Tazuna had explained his reason to lying as they sat in the boat taking them to Wave. Tazuna had just finished as they finished their boat ride. Tazuna tried to thank his friend for his help, but the man was already pushing his boat as hard as he could to get as far away as possible. Tazuna ignored the man. Well my home is only a little ways off. Hopefully we can get there in one piece. As they walked Trish whispered something in Naruto's ear no one could hear and then fell behind. Their journey was peaceful until they reached a large lake with a lone figure standing on the water blocking their path. Well, 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 if it isn't Sharingan Kakashi. It is an honor to finally meet you. How about you step aside and let me kill the bridge builder? Momochi Zabuza, missing ninja of the mist, 
Sorry I can't let you do that. Kakashi raised his forehead protector to reveal his Sharingan eye. Zabuza chuckled. I was hoping you'd say that. He brought his hands up into a seal and mist started to blanket the area. Let's see you try and stop me. As everything faded from view all that could be heard was Zabuza's dark laughter. Hmm, what to choose, what to choose. Throat, spinal column, lungs, liver, jugular vein, subclavian artery, kidney, or heart, how shall I kill you? Kakashi was analyzing the situation while scanning the thick mist with his Sharingan. Triangle formation around Tazuna. The three genin responded instantly. Sasuke's curiosity over Kakashi's Sharingan was forgotten as the killing intent from Zabuza washed over him. Sakura was frozen in fear. Naruto tried to catch any sound of warning. The killing intent had no effect on him. This was way more intense than any of their training sessions. Hell it beat all the training sessions combined. Kakashi heard him coming but when he blocked the attack he discovered it had come from one of the demon brothers. He was surrounded by the demon brothers and Zabuza. Each attacked him in perfect synchronization. Two claw swipes distracted him and put him in the path of Zabuza's Zambato. He ducked in time to avoid losing his head. When the Zambato dug into the ground Zabuza had already switched his grip allowing the motion to aid in his kick. The kick came faster than normal with the additional speed of the spin and struck Kakashi in the chest sending him into the lake. Sura no jutsu the water swirled around Kakashi forming a circular prison. Zabuza was standing on the water and had managed to trap Kakashi. Now, to take care of your annoying little genin. Mizubun Shin no Jutsu. A puddle near the genin formed into a perfect copy of Zabuza. That is before it was cut down by Naruto. Naruto snorted. Please. As if a copy could take us down. Come on or are you too afraid to face us head on? Turning to his still frozen teammates. Hey pretty boy, you afraid to break a nail again or are you gonna help? Pinky snap you ass out of it. Sasuke's fear was replaced by anger at Naruto while Sakura didn't want to get on Naruto's pupil to kill list. Looks like I'm going to have to teach you what a true swordsman can do. Zabuza relinquished control of the water prison to one of the demon brothers and turned to the other. Make sure the other brats don't interfere. Zabuza rushed Naruto, the water didn't hinder his movement at all. Naruto met his charge with a streak as soon as the jonin stepped foot on land. The Zanbato smashed against the katana in a shower of sparks, but the smaller sword held strong. Naruto met Zabuza blow for blow with a strength to match his. When Zabuza realized the kid could match him he used the next sword lock to push the kid back giving him enough time to create a thick mist. Naruto was attacked from all directions. The genin was in the jonin's element. He needed to even the playing field. The bandages on his right arm were torn off revealing his devil bringer to the world. Zabuza's next strike was caught by a transparent blue hand, much to his surprise. Hey asshole, you got a really fucked up notion of fair play, and it's really pissing me off. Naruto's devil bringer held tight as the jonin tried to pull his weapon away. With a yell the boy pulled himself towards Zabuza aiming a sword thrust for his head. The jonin managed to twist out of the way in time escaping with a small cut under his eye. I need to hold him still so I can free Kakashi. Naruto jumped at Zabuza. The mist was now thinning, and he had Zabuza in his sight. As he flew through the air he turned sideways and began to spin himself along with Yamato. Aerial rave! Yamato's slashes were blocked by the Zanbato but the attacks did knock the huge cleaver to the ground. While still in the air Naruto stabbed Yamato into the Zanbato to make sure it stayed pinned to the ground. He then grabbed a kunai and stuck it to the toe of his boot with chakra. Using his katana as a handle began to spin his body with his legs lashing out at Zabuza. He had to switch his grip as Zabuza dodged to prolong the attack. But Zabuza's skill as a jonin allowed him to dodge all the strikes. Naruto's foot dug into the ground, he released the kunai and pushed off launching himself into the air. Zabuza followed with his sword now free for him to use. Zabuza and Naruto's blades met once again but Zabuza used his superior weight to bat Naruto away. Zabuza was surprised when Naruto used his new attack. Kaliba. Naruto bounced off a tree and used a mid-air streak attack on his opponent slamming into Zabuza's Zanbato. The man was thrown to the ground and had to leave his sword to move out of the way of Naruto's following split attack. Naruto's katana stabbed into the ground and Zabuza moved around behind him to put the genin in a headlock. Hell what you gonna do now shrimp? Zabuza's answer was Naruto pulling his sword from the ground and stabbing through himself to get the jonin as well. Zabuza tried to escape, but the boy thrust his sword deeper into himself, pinning them both. You little punk. Zabuza growled out through the pain. How this? 
Naruto raised a shaky devil bringer and sent out a summon sword towards Kakashi's jailer. The man dodged but in doing so he sealed the Konoha Nin's victory. Naruto pulled out Yamato and stumbled away from Zabuza. He could already feel the wound closing but darkness was creeping into his vision. Note to self, that fucking hurts. Naruto fell to his knees slowly losing the battle to stay conscious. The battle must have been more taxing than he thought. The last thing he saw was Kakashi fighting Zabuza and the demon brothers off and Trisha's face appearing over him. Then everything went black. Naruto just floated in darkness. As he continued to drift through oblivion, the blackness around him started to take form of blurry images and scenery. We've found it. The voice sounded aged but still held strength in it. Naruto could make out an old man through the haze. He was dressed as a spiritual leader, in robes and a hat, and seemed rather frail. T this, this is amazing, my lord do you know what this means? Naruto looked to the stuttering man. He was billed like a fighter but seemed to more of a thinker due to the scroll he was furiously scribbling on. The haze had almost completely disappeared. They were in a large room, decorated in various weapons and statues. Most seemed worn from years of age while others looked untouched by the amount of time spent there. Another man, next to the stuttering one, spoke up. Yes, we are one step closer. It is only a matter of time. The man stood tall and straight. He looked more noble and fit for battle than the other two. The older man, Naruto thought was the leader, walked up to an elegant statue of a demon with a sword. As the older man got closer Naruto realized the statue was of Sparta himself. In an impressive display of strength for a man his age, he tore the blade for the statue's grasp. He held it over his head tightly as if it would disappear if he let go. With force edge and out grasp all that is needed is Yamato. The old man said. What? The old man froze at his outburst and disappeared in a burst of speed. Naruto felt a grip tighten around his neck. He tried to get free but the hand held strong. Seems the little devil is listening in on our conversation. The old man leaned closer to where he could stare Naruto in the eyes. We're coming for you, wielder of Yamato. Rebellion is out of outreach, but you, you are still young and weak. A sudden burst of energy slammed into the old man causing him to lose his grip on Naruto. Naruto heard Trish's rage-filled voice flow from all around him. You shall not harm him. Then everything faded around him as he drifted back into a deep sleep. A beautiful young girl with raven black hair sat by Zabuza's bed. Her deep brown eyes darted to the door as a short man in an expensive suit walked in with two samurai bodyguards. So you have the nerve to come back? After you failed not once but twice. Gato walked up to Zabuza's bed with his guards next to him. As Gato got closer the temperature seemed to drop, small amounts of frost appeared on the windows. The young girl's eyes tracked the short man but she did not move. Zabuza looked straight ahead ignoring the corrupt businessman. Devil of the hidden mist my ass. I could kill you right now. Gato reached out towards Zabuza's neck. Gato's arm was grabbed by the young girl before his hand got even close. Don't touch him you worm. She crushed the bones in his arm getting a scream of pain from him. The two bodyguards went to draw their swords but found them held at their necks by the girl. Leave now or I will kill you. The girl's voice was cold and hard. The three men scrambled to get out the room. The room's silence was broken by Zabuza. There was no need for that, Haku. The man lifted his sheet to reveal the hidden kunai. The young girl smiled. If you killed him now he'd be even more useless than he is now. She was right and Zabuza felt too tired to care right now. The demon brothers then appeared in the room. Report. They kneeled before him. The younger brother, Meizu with a claw on his left arm, spoke up sir, we've been spying on the enemy. The Jonin is suffering from a mild case of chakra exhaustion, as you are, but he is still training his genin. The other brother, Gozu with the claw on his right arm, continued. He is preparing them for battle, teaching the more powerful techniques to use. Zabuza thought for a moment. What is their progress? He is adding more ninjutsu to the raven-haired boy's arsenal. While teaching the girl more taijutsu along with a few simple illusions. And the silver-haired genin with the sword? Zabuza's interest was given away by his voice. He didn't come across many rookies with that kind of skill with the sword. He was still recovering while we were spying on them. His battle with you drained him. It was difficult to observe him. He seemed to have a bodyguard. He seems to be the most dangerous of those three kids. He didn't flinch at the killing intent, and he was able to defend against me in battle. Haku I want you to keep an eye on him. You seem least suspicious. Yes, Zabuza-sama. The girl bowed deeply and left with her new task.
In Gato's office a different conversation was being held. Gato was still cradling his broken arm. I want it uncovered. I don't care what it takes. Just get it done. Gato's henchmen scrambled out of the hideout. I'll make you and that little bitch pay Zabuza. Another lackey walked in. What do you want? Sir the assassin you requested is here. Gato's eyes widened in surprise. So soon. At the man's nod he continued. Well, what are you waiting for? Send her in. The man walked out and soon a girl of about 16 years old with short blue hair walked in. She wore a more traditional type of ninja dogi in white, consisting of a sleeveless upper garment and baggy pants. She also had black arm guards, a black mask that concealed the lower half of her face, and sunglasses. The bandages wrapped around her shins, ankles, and insteps served as footwear. She had black kunai and shuriken holsters tied all around her waist along with four more on each leg and arm with a spear strapped to her back. You requested a demon hunter? She was all business. Yes, I have reason to believe that a local group of ninja is being impersonated by demons. I can't trust Zabuza. I need someone to get rid of those enemy ninja. Hopefully she won't be able to tell the difference. By the way we haven't introduced ourselves I'm Gato. My name is no concern of yours. I will look into this but if I find you are lying to me I will triple my fee, that is if I feel generous enough to let you live. Any details or requests about the mission? This girl sure was high and mighty to say she was in his fortress. The team consists of one adult and three children. Each one of them is powerful. Which one of them are demons is uncertain. They are currently protecting the local bridge builder. Do not report back here. When I find they have been disposed of I will have one of my men find and pay you for your service. Alright. The demons are as good as dead. If I am not paid within two weeks of the kill you will be next. The young woman walked out leaving grinning man behind. Too bad I have to kill her. You don't come across a figure like that often. Naruto's eyes opened slowly only to be blinded by sunlight. He noticed his chest was wrapped in bandages. He tried to remember what happened but his head was pounding too much for him to think straight. After a short while, everything came rushing back. The mission, Zabuza, the battle, then the dream. He tried to sit up, every muscle in his body was burning in protest. A hand gently pushed him back down. He opened his eyes again to see the blurry outline of Trish. You need to rest master you are still weak. Trish's gentle voice soothed Naruto's troubled mind. Naruto's body broke out in a series of spasms while the burning increased tenfold, becoming unbearable. As Naruto struggled though the pain he managed to gasp out. Why does it hurt so much? The spasms subsided leaving him weaker than before. Trish was quiet for a moment. When you stabbed yourself, you unlocked something that was dormant. It caused a jump in your demonic energy. But it also, she trailed off as if trying to believe it herself. Also what Trish, Naruto did not know what was happening, but Trish did and he'd be damned if he let her keep the answers from him. Trish sighed. Your demonic blood has become more potent, master. The power you unlocked by stabbing yourself with Yamato fed off of another demonic energy inside you. Your blood is basically becoming more like that of a devil's. That is why you are weak, your body is changing to hold more of your demonic power. Naruto sat quietly thinking over the information. So I'm becoming more of a demon, great. His voice dripped with sarcasm, but a thought struck him. Just how much more demonic am I becoming? Trish thought for a moment. When you first pulled on the legacy in you blood, it was weak, but it still granted you Yamato and your devil bringer arm. While the weapons themselves are extremely powerful and the stress they caused you lessened as you trained, you were only able to harness a small amount the power they could provide. But your inner demon slowly fed off a foreign demonic energy inside you allowing for you to slowly gain more power. Yeah, but I never felt like this before. I can barely move. It even hurts to blink. Naruto tried to lift his arm. He managed to lift it a bit only for it to fall back to his side. The key was Yamato, master. When the blade was directly exposed to your blood willingly, it caused the demonic energies in you to accelerate the rate at which it drew on the foreign energy inside you for a short amount of time. The devil blood inside you is now just as potent as the human blood. Technically you're half devil now. But something I find curious is that your blood has also stopped feeding off the other energy completely. This news just keeps getting better and better. As if I didn't have enough with trying to explain my arm. Naruto managed to ignore the pain and sit himself up. Master you must rest. Your power was explained by Kakashi as something called a Kekiai Genkai. It is accurate enough for you to avoid unwanted questions. 
She moved to push him back down, but he swatted her hand away. You are there, Trish. They're coming for me. They want Yamato. I need to get stronger. I couldn't even break the old man's grip. Naruto realized he was yelling and calmed himself. I didn't mean to yell. I just can't stand being weak. Might controls everything. Without power you can't protect anyone let alone yourself. And right now I know we're near powerful enough. Trish could see the pride and fear in his eyes when he looked at her. Without a word she helped him out of the futon Tazuna's daughter had provided for them. While grabbing Yamato and his coat she told him what happened while he was out. He had only been out for about a day. After he freed Kakashi the Jonin was able to fight off Sabuza while Sakura and Sasuke held off the demon brothers. The enemy all escaped alive with the help of a masked ally but Kakashi managed to severely weaken Zabuza. Kakashi was now training the other genin while he recovered from a slight case of chakra exhaustion. Tazuna's daughter tried to stop them from going outside but a fierce glare from Naruto silenced her. Trish apologized for Naruto's behavior but the woman still looked worried for the silver-haired boy. As they made their way to the others Trish said Kakashi estimated they had anywhere from three days to a week to prepare for another battle. They walked into a clearing. Naruto had finally recovered enough strength to walk on his own but Trish was still near just in case. Kakashi was sitting near a tree drilling the others into the ground. Again, Sasuke jumped into the air. Going through a few hand seals he released three small fireballs headed straight towards Sakura. Sakura responded by punching the ground. A few small rocks were launched into the air. She kicked one and punched the two others at the fireballs, making them explode. Both Jenin fell to the ground. Sasuke had scorch marks all over his body along with some scrapes and bruises. Sakura's knuckles were bleeding and the skin was torn on her limbs from intense taijutsu training. Naruto clapped as he walked up to them with Trish following behind him. The genin stared at his devil bringer but he ignored it. Kakashi got up and walked up to them. Now that we're all together, Naruto can explain his unique kekiai genkai. Kakashi motioned for Naruto to explain. The genin were curious. Even Kakashi had a tough time digging up the smallest amount of information on the abilities it provided Naruto. Naruto sighed, might as well get it over with. I don't know much about it since I'm still learning to use it, but what I do know it is basically a weapon. Naruto stepped back and held out his devil bringer. His arm glowed and a larger, fully blue ethereal arm appeared over it. It functions like a regular arm just has a little more of full range of motion, just as dexterous as my left arm, and deadly trump card. I can do anything from pound a boulder to rumble, or snatch a fly out the air not harming it in the least. Also allows me to make these. Naruto spun around as a blue sword shot from his arm spinning like a shuriken and cut down a tree. I call them summon swords, still trying to make the damn things explode though it's starting to piss me off. That's all I figured out so far. Whoa, I never knew Naruto had that kind of power. Sakura was in awe of Naruto's arm, but she couldn't say it surprised her it fit Naruto's personality pretty well. I need to unlock my Sharingan. If he ever uses that against me I'll need it to be able to keep up. Sasuke now saw Naruto as a worthy rival instead of the dead last genin. Of course he never admitted out loud. Interesting. Kakashi wanted to uncover his Sharingan and take a closer look but now wasn't the time. I am teaching Sakura how to utilize Taijutsu and Illusions and Sasuke knew ninjutsu he must master. As for you, Naruto, I'm not sure what attacks would fit into your arsenal best. Trish stepped in. That is fine. I must teach the young master how to control Kekiai Genkai better anyway. So you know how his power works? Kakashi was still wary of this woman. Her chakra didn't feel normal. It felt darker kind of like that of a demon's. No, I do not know how his power works but I do know how to help him to control it. Trish walked away disappearing into the surrounding trees. When you are ready young master you know where to find me. Kakashi stared down at Naruto. Just who is she and why is she here in the first place, Naruto? I never did get a chance to question you on it. She's supposed to be a family guardian. From what I've seen so far she is trustworthy. I don't get why you're so worried about her. Naruto knew Trish didn't mean him any harm. Look, my Kekiai Genkai is getting stronger, and she's the only one who can help me with it. You're just gonna have to trust me. Naruto hurried after Trish. The sooner he learned to control his powers the better. All right Naruto, for your sake, I hope you're right. Kakashi mumbled before turning back to his other genin on the ground. I don't remember saying you could take a break, the two genin groaned. Naruto walked into another clearing a little ways off from his teammates. Trish stood in the middle calmly waiting for him. 
Let's begin. Shall we? Trisha's sly smile made Naruto slightly nervous. Trisha's training focused solely on his demonic powers while she kept giving suggestions on how to better his control. As they continued he noticed it took less effort to use his devil bringer. Things he had usually had to concentrate on doing now happened almost on instinct. Soon she left him to continue his ninja training in private. She distracted Naruto too much for him to train diligently. Pressing up against him, teasing him, and many other actions that would put Naruto off track due to embarrassment. She also said she sensed a hostile presence near. Naruto still didn't know much about her. He couldn't even tell if she followed him willingly or if she was just being forced to. She did seem to take pride in helping him. She never talked about herself, either, but he still felt he could trust her with his life. It was odd. He didn't know how he became so close to her, but he liked having someone. After the years of loneliness, he finally had someone who was with him. The Sandame, Tuchi, and Ayam were precious to him but they couldn't be with him as often as he would like with their duties. But Trisha's duty was to be with him. Was he selfish to enjoy her company, even if it was her duty? He didn't care. Being around her made him feel human for the first time since Kairi died. As Haku finished dressing herself she let her mind wander. She didn't understand what it was about that genin that caught Sabuzasama's interest. Yes, he was skilled but they had met more dangerous ninja in the past. If he posed a treat they could easily kill him. Just what did Zabuzasama see in this boy? She grabbed a small basket while she walked out. She may as well see if she can find any herbs to help Zabuzasama while watching the genin. On her walk to the forest she realized the look Zabuzasama had given the silver-haired genin. It was the same look he gave her when he first found her. The thought that he might be looking for another pupil sent a dull ache through her heart. Yes, she was his tool but she was still sharp. Her skills were still growing. Would he really cast her aside so suddenly? Haku realized she was already in the forest finding a good area she moved on instinct. Her body automatically started picking the good herbs from the weeds. Would her master forget about her? Could she be of no other use? She was so deep in thought that when she saw the moving lump on the ground she went for her hidden needles, which were left at the base as to avoid suspicion. Upon closer inspection she saw that as was only her target. The boy's silver hair was tangled and messy. His coat was also off showing off his well-defined upper body. Haku blushed when she caught herself staring. Then she noticed the boy's right arm. Reddish armor covered it with blue skin underneath, skin that still glowed despite the boy being asleep. The cause of her worry and fear was only a few feet away. Unaware, unguarded, if she reached out she could snap his neck and he would die. No, she couldn't let her emotions cloud her judgment. Zabuza would never toss her away. She moved to nudge the boy awake, but as soon as her hand neared him his eyes shot open and she felt a blade touch her neck not hard but enough to draw a thin line of blood. Fear gripped her heart as those eyes stared into her very soul. She was weaponless, trapped, and at his mercy. She tried not to swallow as the blade would only cut deeper. The blade left her neck as quickly as it came to rest there. She heard the boy say something. I'm sorry? Haka couldn't believe she was stuttering. Maybe it will make her seem more like a civilian. I said don't sneak up on me like that, unless you want to die, girl. The boy's voice was guarded. I only meant to wake you. You'll catch a cold if you sleep out here. Haku couldn't think of anything else to say. She was not sure how she was going to do this. The boy's awareness was on par with her master's. And by the way he spoke he wasn't the guy that went out of his way to make friends. Spying on him may be impossible. Whatever, just don't get in my way. He dismissed her to continue his couldn't believe it. This boy who could nearly stand up to her master would dismiss a potential treat so casually. He walked up the nearest tree. Hey babe, if you want to watch that's cool but try not to stare, although I can't really blame you. Haku's face went red in embarrassment. There had to be a way to gain his trust there is no way he would let his guard down so easily. Actually, I was wondering if you could help me gather some herbs. My mother is sick and I'll need a large amount to make her some medicine. Maybe she could still fool him. He landed softly beside her. If I do will you stop bugging me? Haku just smiled and showed him what the plants she needed looked like. Soon they were both at work finding them. So what were you doing so early? It must have been hard since you fell asleep. If only she could get him to open up. I was training. The boy didn't look up from the herbs he was collecting. Why? She was truly curious. The boy was surely past gen and level in strength. He had to bend to hold off Sabuza. Why push himself so hard to become stronger? To become stronger. 
I've lost too much from being weak. I'm not going to let it happen again. This time he did look up only to look past her, as if he saw something happening she didn't. Do you have anyone worth protecting? I believe when you protect someone close to you, you can become stronger than ever. She asked him. He was becoming more responsive this was her chance to dig deeper. Yeah I know what you mean. That's exactly why I trying to become stronger. I lost someone dear to me and I never want that to happen again. His eyes focused back on her. Why so curious? You want to be someone close to me or something? Haku was surprised at his conclusion and could feel her face heat up in embarrassment. How was he able to get this reaction from her so easily? She decided there was no harm in that. Yes, I'd like to be your friend, that is if you don't mind. Haku's reports would slowly become less descriptive as she focused more on Naruto than his actual training. He intrigued her. They were so much alike. She had been honest and told him about her past while he listened quietly. In return she found out about his past. She actually cried for him the night she found out. She found herself coming back to this spot more often just for a chance to talk to him. Naruto didn't know what it was about this girl, Haku. She reminded him so much of Kairi. The peacefulness she seemed to radiate, her smile, even the way she acted. His attitude did not bother her at all. She would just smile at him. She didn't even seem to care about his arm. Everyone who saw it would stare in fear but she just studied his arm in awe more so than even Trish or Sakura did. He found himself opening up to her as he grew to know her better. In just four days he felt as if he known her his entire life. But deep down he wondered will the same thing that happened to Kairi happen to her? Or will he be able to protect her from harm? Zabuza was almost fully recovered, just a little while longer. He couldn't help but think on how strangely Haku had been behaving. At first she had carried out his mission expertly. She gave specific details on the silver-haired boy, Naruto she called him, did during his training. But slowly her reports became less and less detailed. Zabuza thought that might have meant there was no change but that was unlike Haku. Even when there was no change she detailed why there was no change. She became more to herself as well. Just sitting alone with nothing but her own thoughts to keep her company. He was worried what could have brought out such a change in her. Haku, he called. Normally she was by his side in mere moments, but each time he called she took a little longer. The apple he was eating was crushed into pieces as his patience ran thin. Yes, Zabuza-sama she appeared in her civilian clothes, kneeling before him, another change in her behavior. She warned them more often and even though she constantly spied on the Naruto boy she had little detail on his training. She hadn't even found out about the boy's arm. We attack tomorrow. Prepare yourself. He saw the surprise flash across her features but it was quickly hidden. I will prepare at once. She moved to leave. Haku, are you with me? His question came out without emotion. Of course, Zabuza-sama. She didn't move from her kneel. And she was looking at the ground. You will kill for me? She stayed silent for a while. He asked again. Will you kill for me, my tool? Yes, Zabuza-sama, I will. Good, you are dismissed. She quickly left. He thought he saw a faint trace of sadness and was about to apologize before he caught himself. She is only a tool. But that didn't stop him from regretting what he said to her. Naruto stumbled into Tazuna's house. Everyone turned to see him smiling despite his beat-up condition. Taking a few more unsteady steps his legs gave out on him. Trish was there to catch him before he hit the ground. She guided him to his seat at the table where he slumped into a heap. He weakly waved Trish away when he saw her hovering above him. Trish calmly took her seat next to him. While Naruto looked by far the worst out of the genin, Sasuke and Sakura were not exactly in pristine condition either. So you're back, you look like something the cat dragged in. Well I'm not one to talk while being so dirty, but the bridge is almost done to Zuna's comment was good natured. The old man was in a rather happy mood from his current progress. Kakashi looked up from his book. I am almost fully recovered. We will all accompany Tazuna tomorrow so he can finish the bridge. The happy atmosphere was broken when the little boy, Inari, slammed his hands on the table. Why are you trying so hard? You're just going to die anyway. Tears were sliding down the boy's cheeks. Naruto knew this kid had been through a lot but that didn't mean he had the right to degrade them. At least we're doing something you little shit. Your grandpa is risking his neck to free his home and we're doing our best to protect him. Even your mom is helping by providing food and a place to sleep. And what are you doing? You're crying and saying it's hopeless. Quit your bitchin' and suck it up. Naruto put his head back down. 
Inari's tears only increased. Shut up. You think you're so cool. But you don't know anything about me. You have nothing to worry about, and you have no idea what the suffering and loneliness in my life is like. Tazuna and his. Everyone felt the sudden change in Naruto. Kakashi tensed instinctively as Naruto's chakra spiked. This might not end well. Sasuke, Sakura, and even the less chakra-sensitive Tazuna and Tsunami could sense the sudden change. The only one who didn't seem bothered by it at all was Trish. You wanna die, you little shit? Naruto's voice was calm and tense. Naruto looked up to give Inari a glare that froze the boy in fear. They could see the red starting to bleed into the white of his eyes. You don't know a damn thing about me so don't ever compare your life to mine. Naruto got up and left leaving the boy trembling in fear. The door slammed behind Naruto. Trish got up shortly after to follow him. I will bring him back after he has calmed himself. Inari sat silently outside watching the waves. Do you mind if I join you? The boy turned to see Kakashi walk up and sit down next to him. You know Naruto wasn't trying to be mean, he just lost control. You managed to strike a sore spot he still has trouble dealing with. The boy didn't respond, he just looked out to the water. Tazuna told us what happened to you father. And while you may think you've had a hard life, it is nothing compared to the hell Naruto has been through. Sometimes I think he has had it worse than me, and that's saying something. The boy looked up in shock. Imagine growing up with nothing, no family, no friends, not even a home. And then one day be given the one thing you wanted, a mother who loves you. Only to have it torn away leaving you with even more pain. But even with the pain he kept going, all he has been through and not once have I ever seen him give up, he is too strong. He won't let himself take the easy way out and just quit, he keeps fighting though. That's why he is so angry with you. To him you're just giving up and it annoys him to no end. He doesn't hate you, he just can't stand seeing you give up all hope when you still have so much to live for. You still have your loving mother and grandfather and a chance to free yourself from Gato and yet you don't even try to grasp it. Out of all of us he knows what you're going through the most, and, in his own way, he is trying to help you. He may seem a little rough around the edges but his heart is always in the right place. Kakashi got up dusting himself off. He walked away but called over his shoulder. Try and think on it. That little fucker thinks I don't know what it's like. Naruto punched a massive tree repeatedly with his devil bringer. The tree splintered and cracked as his arm kept slamming into it, each hit stronger than the last. With a groan the tree slowly toppled to the ground aimed directly at Naruto. Naruto's devil bringer glowed in anticipation. As the tree came down it was met by the ethereal blue arm that extended from the devil bringer and slammed into it. The force behind the hit lifted the tree into the air and on its second way down it split down the middle falling on either side of the half devil. Naruto was about to start on another tree when slender arms wrapped around his neck pulling him into the woman behind him. One stayed around his neck as the other moved upward and started to play in his silver locks. The presence seemed to calm the beast raging inside of him as he relaxed into the woman. That is enough master, save your strength for when it is needed. Trisha's voice wasn't angry but it was still firm. She added more gently. The boy is still young do not let his words get to you. She released her hold on him and began to walk back. Come you must rest for tomorrow that your teacher is expecting a battle. And just how do you know that? His only answer was a sly smile. As the two walked off a blue haired figure watched from the shadows. This demon is powerful, but so confusing. And then there is his demon servant. These two will be difficult to defeat. The figure faded into the shadows. The short man with a broken arm sat in his chair patiently. Three of his guards walked in with a suitcase. Is that it? The man nodded. Show it to me. Placing the suitcase on his desk they unlocked in. Gato reached out and opened it. The light blinded him for a moment, but inside he saw his prize. An evil smile settled on his face the eerie light that the item gave off twisted his features. The smile stayed there even when he closed the suitcase. Leave me. The small man barked. The lackeys quickly complied. A low chuckle escaped his lips. Finally, I can crush them all. Tomorrow they will all pay. The low chuckle became louder and soon it turned into a full-blown insane laugh. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you want the next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below and turn on the bell notification. And also check out other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.